In this video, we'll go beyond creating simple boxes um, based on housing profiles or site profiles. If you have seen the previous videos in this series, you see um, that we have created these two small boxes in various ways, including a rec controller here. And that was all done by following what Sheffer has proposed in their uh, housing assembly manual, where you can uh, create uh, perfectly rectangular boxes of various sorts. But here we go beyond, and if you look at the side of this controller from uh, the Skahoy product range, AC201, you'll see that it's, it's a console, it has a, a tilted uh, surface, and uh, that's all based on basically this type of box, or a housing, uh, housing profile box, but where the one side is shorter than the other one. And we have created for this video a console that we'll now put together. So the items you see here are the four housing brackets here. We have um, the front surface here. And um, as you can see, it has a, a cavity on the side, so it will um, fit into a housing profile like this. So it also means that the surface here is uh, recessed a little bit uh, related to the housing profile. Um, then you see we have um, the sides of, of the console. They are supposed to be mounted like this and then the housing profiles and the sides will be uh, in between. Um, if you look closely you can see there is also a one millimeter deep cavity here and the point is that it, it's uh, instead of having housing brackets but that will hold the side, so um, any any pressure will not move it into the box, force it into the box. Um, this is uh, the front; it's supposed to uh, to sit here, and here we have the the back, and it's sitting there. There are also uh, some cavities for that, and then finally, and most interestingly, the bottom, because the bottom is supposed to sit here, but as you can see, it is uh, slightly bent in each end. And uh, to that, um, in order to, to be able to do that, um, the bottom has a cavity. So if you look closely here, you can see that there is not only a general cavity which uh, will fit for a housing profile, but there is also a small cavity in here which will allow me to bend it a little bit. To bend a panel like this, it can actually be, if it's really long, it's really hard to bend. That cavity leaves one point or 0 0.5 that's half a millimeter of aluminum left so it's actually so little that you you should be able to bend it uh, just on the table here um, if we look at how it's supposed to go into the controller the, the point is that for the bottom it should um, fit in like this then it should then bend a little bit and this is what I now do and I can simply do it by hand because um, the aluminum is so short that I can do that. Um, it's just about finding the right angle and this is then what you uh, will be working on. So now watch this and fast forward uh, as I assemble the device. So now we need to take a look at how the script was used to create this. As you can see, there was a lot of features that you haven't seen before, like there was cavities in the, the front and the back plates. We also had a bottom plate which had uh, a special cavity for bending. And um, we have a different uh, height uh, on the front and the back sides of, of this box in order to achieve this form factor. And those are all special settings which you need to do manually in the housing script. And that's what we're going to take a look at right now. The first thing you do when you uh, open the scripts dialog inside Front Panel Designer is to press this button right here. 
which will open up so you can see the contents of the Sheffer housing script. And the things, first thing you need to do is to go to this line uh, where uh, you need to change a variable. Uh, it's called C underscore UI, set it to false because then the GUI will not open up. So that's step number one. And um, then another, another thing is that on this box we used housing profile number one on all sides. And housing profile number two, which uh, was shown on just a sec. On this box, housing profile number two used on the top here allowed us to have a, a front panel which could be screwed uh, down uh, from outside instead of slided in from the end. Uh, it's only possible to use housing profile number two on, on opposing sides on such a box. And in this case, it doesn't make sense. Although, I mean, yeah, we could have it on the front or the back or, or the front, but not on the bottom because there we have uh, the special concept of bending the panel to, to fit it in. Um, yeah, so we need to disable that the script will give you a housing profile number two on the top. And that's the second step that we'll now do. So we scroll down. And um, uh, if, if you look inside this script, you, you see some parameters and the next video will go into details with all, with all these parameters, but we'll introduce some of them right now. Uh, the first one is that uh, the, the type is housing profiles, check, that's what we already got, that's great. Uh, and then we get to this one called housing profile two on all of the sides. So if, if you look, um, you can see there's one called top, left, right, bottom. And by default, the top side of the box is designed to be created by housing profile number two. And we set this parameter to false, okay? So step number three is that this box is uh, a different width um, than um, it would otherwise be by default. Actually, so far, when we created these boxes, just by the default parameters, we had something which became uh, 80 millimeters deep. And this one is deeper. Actually, we would say this is wide, but the reason why wide or deep is because actually, when we are looking at this console box, when it's created with the housing profile script, it's actually the front and the back here. This is the top, left, right, and the bottom. But when we look at it like this, we say, okay, this is the top and that's the left and the right side. But in the script, it's not like that. So just be aware about that. Uh, and therefore, the, the height and the width of the box, and we have the depth in this direction. So what we see as the width is actually the depth parameter. And that's the next thing that we are going to adjust inside the script. So we set the depth not to 80 millimeters, but to 180 millimeters to achieve these dimensions. The next thing we need to do is to change the um, thickness of the aluminum used in these cases. Um, I think by default, these boxes are created by the same thickness on, on all panels. So it's a 2.5 in this example. Uh, but this box actually had um, different uh, thicknesses of aluminum. First of all, the front and the back panel or what we call the sides here, I like if they are thick, thicker than the other panels because it looks cooler when you look at the box. It gets more, more harmonic with the housing profiles and, uh, around the, the top surface. So uh, these are actually four millimeters thick. Another thing is that the front plate here, because this is supposed to have some electronics on and it may need to take some pressure, it's also thicker and it's easy for you to, uh, to see if I remove the end so we can see all these uh, features. So just, just a moment. Okay, so here I take off the end and there you can see that the, the top panel we have right here is actually thicker, you should be able to see that here. It's uh, thicker than, than the bottom and also the side uh, panels are. So um, that should prove, prove my point. Um, so now we need to keep a clear mind. We want to have the end plates, the end, uh, the front and the back should be four. So I, I write, see, four millimeters there. And I want the top panel to be four millimeters as well. So I enter these values into the array of thicknesses. So what is left and still two and a half is then the, the, the bottom panel, the left and the right panel, and that should be fine. So 
That was step number three. Step number four is to define which color you want for the aluminum panels. And in this case, you can see most of them are natural colored, but the top face is blue. But in the other cases here, we had the same color for all panels, red, 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 and red. In this case, I want the top blue and the rest neutral. This is also possible to configure in the script. So if you scroll further down, you see an array called C color, and here you can actually define all these things. And you see that it's, it says blue for many of, of, of them. Actually, I want to uh, then move some of them back to natural. It's only the front panel that should be blue. So I'll just put in natural by a copy paste operation here. So the top is now going to be blue and that's all I want. So that was the next step. When you look at the box, you see that the front and the back panels, they have some cavities in them, but you also see another thing. And if we make it close, close up picture here, uh, I may even need to go a little bit further in. Okay, if you can see here, um, there is actually a cavity down in the aluminum here and there's also a cavity here on uh, on the panel where it should fit in so that uh, these are called let me see assembly or, or cavities for for slots and uh, this is called a a slot in in the script uh, so there are some parameters and uh, you can see for the top and uh, also for the for the sides uh, here, for the top and the back and the front side, we have these cavities in the metal, but not on the front side. That's not milled like that. Actually, I'm not entirely sure why I chose to do it like this. I think this is like a, a kind of a, um, a specialist uh, feature in some way. Although um, on a rack, rack controller, it could help you not to use housing brackets, for instance. But um, Anyway, in this particular enclosure, I decided to disable this cavity for the bottom. And the way I did that, if you look in the software, is I, um, I define in this area, you can see depth of the cavities for, for slots front. And, and there you define uh, how deep it should be in millimeters. And for the bottom, you can see the bottom is the second parameter in these two. I defined it to be zero, just like that. Um, apart from that, the, the script is basically designed to give you these assembly slots out of the box. So when you, if you watch the video of creating the basic con uh, housing um, house, housings here uh, using the GUI, uh, these features are disabled actually. But as soon as you go pro and um, begin to use the, the script manually, uh, you need to understand or disable them if, if you don't want these features. The final step, which is related directly to creating a console controller, is that you need to specify that you have a different height of your device on the one uh, side than the other one. And um, this is where you scroll down to the bottom, where you uh, find the parameter housing profile right height. And uh, in this case, I think we set it to what? What was the? What is the general box height? It was uh, 60, so it's probably 60 here on the back, and I guess it's 40 here on the front. Yes. So I type in 40. It means that the front side of the box is going to be 40 millimeters high. This is 60 millimeters high, defined by the general height of the box, and that's what gives you the angle. Then you need to use the width of the box to calculate what the angle is if, if, you, uh, if you want to know that. Another thing which is different from, from, from this box, on this box all the sides, the top, left, right, bottom, they are completely flush with the housing profile. And this is according to the Schaeffer Housing Assembly Guide. But what I like to do, and that might also be difficult to see on video, is to have the surfaces just lowered one millimeter so that it, it, it slides in under the housing profiles. And this is a, a parameter called side expansion offset. If it's set to zero as it is by default, you get sides just like this one. But if you set it to minus one, it means that the sides moves into the box a little bit. And um, so I set now this parameter to minus one for all sides, like that. And then 
what is left could be to uh, determine whether or not we will have guide engravings and uh, create an order and so on. I'll just keep it as it is right now and then press start and let's see what comes out of the script. And we saw a lot of panels being created, so if we now go here, we look at the front. The front panel looks very much like, like one of the sides, as you can see. And again, we have the guide engravings helping us to clearly see how this whole thing is uh, assembled together. Uh, let's, for instance, take a look at, at this corner. You can so easily see this is how the housing profile fits together. And there you see also how the the top panel crept uh, or is moved into the box a little bit like that. Um, that was the side expansion offset set to minus one that moves it down slightly, which is real nice. Um, you can see the top is a four millimeter high compared to the sides here, uh, the sides over here, which are 2.5 millimeter wide. We scroll down to the bottom. You can see here the graphics is not entirely right because actually the panel will bend in correctly and, and sit uh, inside this cavity. Uh, but just forgive me for not rendering that better. Uh, but still at least you, you get the idea that the, the bottom panel is, um, you know, is, is uh, tilted like that. Okay, so we have the top panel. The back panel, of course, is uh, the reverse. Um, bottom, left and right panels and all that goes together into this box. So that's how you create consoles. There, there were some technical details and now you moved into using the housing script in a manual way. You need to adjust the parameters manually in the script as you have seen me doing. And um, yeah, it, it may take a little bit studying and playing, not uh, to mention to, uh, to get this uh, right. But you can uh, create some really uh, uh, cool um, enclosures doing this console type enclosures. <laughs>